Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I'm going to be doing a build video on the Tamiya semi truck transmissions. I've got the transmission from a uh, King hauler and a Grand hauler. Uh, they're slightly different in a couple little places, so I'm going to build them both. This is going to replace a video I've had for a long time. Uh, that's been very, very popular and shows in detail how to build the transmission. I'm going to shoot it mostly with no edits, so it's just going to be the whole thing from beginning to end. If you're building a Tamiya truck transmission for the first time, you're really going to want to watch this. Uh, it shows every little detail of how it goes together so you can get it working right and get it in your truck. So, let's get started. Alright, so... Uh, as I start this transmission video, here's what I've got. I've got a complete transmission kit from a Grand Hauler. I have a transmission from a King Hauler because there's some minor differences that I want to show. I've got a pile of ball bearings. I've got a transmission that's already put together. And what I'm planning to do is go through a build. Um, I'll go through this King Hauler or uh, Grand Hauler transmission pretty much nonstop. So I'm going to build the entire thing without, without cutting away. And uh, then I'll show the differences in the King Hauler transmission and show you how I test them and how they work. So I'm going to pop open some bags and get this one ready to build. And then we'll come back and we'll do a build in, in one video. I'm going to show some of the common errors uh, that I see and exactly how I put them together. Uh, if you follow along this video step by step, you'll be able to get one of these transmissions together no problem. Okay, so here we go with our transmission build. First thing I'm going to do is clip these parts off. And these are made out of a kind of a nylon. It's actually a fiber reinforced nylon. But there's a little bit of cleanup work to do on them. So we will show that. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna I'm not gonna pause this video or cut it. It's just gonna be the whole transmission assembly. Okay, that's now empty. Make sure you get the little one out of there, get rid of that. Now, when I clipped off these parts, it left a, a small bump here on each side on these three big ones. Okay, so those need to be clipped off. The way Tamiya molds it is it goes in around the corner and it's important that, that you get rid of those. So I clip them off with my side cutters and then make sure they are gone with a knife making these parts smooth you can also see this one here has them get rid of that if you don't cut those off they will interfere with your shifting Okay, so those parts are cut out and ready to go. Now there's three major shafts. There's an upper shaft, a center shaft, and then there's a shift shaft. So we're going to build the upper shaft first, then the center shaft, and then we'll go to the shift shafts. These I already assembled from a King Hauler transmission. So the upper shaft is, is this shaft right here. It has three sets of splines. So we're going to use a, a large size E-clip. Now, I put these on by pushing them against my work mat and then snapping them down. So I put the one on the short shaft here first and then this long end. Okay, so those are on. Now the first gear that goes on is this metal gear and it just drops on e-clip fits against it 
and then I just use a pair of needle nose pliers to snap it on. And yes, to me it does give you a couple extras, but not a lot, so try not to shoot too many of them across the rim. Okay, so there's our center shaft. Now the next shaft is the long end here. It uses this metal gear with a with a little ridge on it, and that drops into this nylon gear that has the teeth in it. And then it drops on here, and another E-clip goes on. E-clip, C-clip, I don't know, either way. Okay, we got those two on. Now we have to put an E-ring on here. I'm going to use pliers on this one. Now, this is important. There's, there's three little collars that are splined inside. One of them is brass colored and two of them are shiny. We're going to use the brass colored one. And it drops into the gear that is designed for it. And it goes on this way. Now, I've seen a lot of people, this is the one thing I see very commonly, is people will put it on backwards like that. It goes gear first, gear first, and then the, the brass part. The transmission will actually work if you put it together backwards uh, for a while, but then it binds up and, and uh, the gears don't line up right. So make sure that you get that on correctly. Okay, and that's it. That's our upper shaft. Three gears several parts matches the one we already finished so that one's ready to go now the center shaft a little more complicated it has two splined areas we're going to put a clip on right there okay so right in the middle of those two areas now we've got a big fat gear it uses a larger size bearing. Now, the kit comes with brass bushings. And as I mentioned, uh, have mentioned many, many times, I do not use those. I use ball bearings everywhere. Um, so the grand hauler transmission actually includes a couple of ball bearings and then several brass bushings uh, in the two different sizes. So I'm going to replace those with ball bearings, the bigger size ball bearings, and the smaller size ball bearings. Now it also comes with a couple ball bearings, but you'll notice that the ball bearings from the ball bearing kit have little nylon seals in them and the Tamiya bearings don't. Now, there's nothing wrong with that except that I do not use those wherever dirt can get to them. So, for example, on a transmission, they're fine to use on gears that are completely inside, but on, on the ends, where it could be exposed, I only use ball bearings that are sealed. So I will use these ball bearings, but first thing we got to do is put these big size bearings in this big gear. They just press in. And then this just drops on the shaft, on the short end here, and a C-clip holds it on. Okay. Now the next part is this clutch dog that's going to drop in here, and it also uses the big size bearings. Now, the Tamiya instructions will tell you on some kits not to replace that um, with a ball bearing. It says do not replace with ball bearings. However, I use ball bearings there. To me it says to use the bronze bushings. I don't like the bronze bushings. I've built hundreds and hundreds of transmissions. I always use ball bearings. 
But the secret here is you have to glue them in. So I use a little medium CA glue, just a tiny, tiny bit. And push that bearing into place. Wipe off any extra glue. Same thing on the bottom side. Push it into place. Wipe off any extra glue. Now, why do they say don't use ball bearings? Well, this has to slide on the shaft besides rotate. So, you want bearings that will slide. These bearings that I've got slide perfectly fine. This is the only area though that you need to grease the shaft. So we're going to grease it with some Tamiya ceramic grease here. And then we're going to slide this on and put a C-clip on it. This one can be a bit of a booger. Okay, and I'll even add a little more grease in there. So it's greased up really good. Okay, as you can see, that slides just fine. Now, we've got two shift dogs here that look the same. The difference is, one has smaller slots on the inside this one has bigger slots on the inside. So the one with the smaller slots goes against the flat side of this gear. So we're going to drop on one of these um, bushings and you can see there's a little tiny lip on the end here. Lip goes on first. We grease it up. Got the small slots, drops on here. Then we take the small size gear, throw a couple bearings in it, and this is an internal gear so we can use the bearings that aren't sealed. King Hauler doesn't come with them. So you'll, you can use um, sealed bearings. And then we'll drop a C-clip on there. Now notice, it has, a, it has a slot right here. And sometimes you'll think, oh, i got to get a, a, uh, a C-clip on there. And this one actually does get a C-clip. The other side doesn't. Got that little devil and put it on here. Okay, drop this That's back on. This drops on, and now we put one more C clip on. this end, they give you this big washer, it drops on, they give you another one of these spline collars, and this one we put the, the little lip up, grease it up, and drop on the slider that's got the big slots, and the big slots should line up with this, yes they do. Okay, we're going to put a couple of bearings in this big gear, drop it on. Now notice this side does not get a clip on top of that. It's a spacer. And one more C-clip.
Okay, so there's our center gear. We've got our upper gear and our center gear. That matches the one we already built. So we got those two finished. Now let's prepare the housing. The housing has a bushing for the shift shaft. Bushing goes left and this piece goes on the inside. Drop a little nut in the nut holder here. And then there's a small screw. It's in it. Other nut. Another small screw. Okay, put a bearing in it, put one of these bearing retainers in here, another bearing, okay, then we're going to use a short 6 millimeter screw, gets one of these rods, put three of those on to start with, the two upper ones, and then the lower one opposite the shift shaft bushing. Once those are on, we can tighten them up. Okay, there's our end case. This end case is going to fit this way where the shift shaft lines up. So we need to put two bearing retainers in here. And a couple of bearings and I need one more bearing. I'm going to grab that. As promised I'll leave the camera going. Okay, now comes the shift shaft. Now, in the Grand Hauler kit, the shift shaft is packaged in a little bag separately from everywhere else, so you got to make sure you don't lose it. It's very shiny. And this is the difference between a Grand Hauler and a King Hauler. King Hauler shift shaft is not as shiny, and it's a tiny bit longer. So, we're going to show the differences between those two shafts. Now, we'll go with the Grand Hauler first. Okay, so they use these tiny little clips. Boy, these things are easy to lose. Work way over your workbench, and if you drop one on the carpet, you'll never see it again. Same way, I put it against the bench push down on the shaft and you, you have to put these two center ones on first. Okay, then we add a little grease to the shaft. Now notice this end is long and this one is short. We're going to have the long end here on the right. Put a little grease on that and the shaft just drops right on. Now, there's a little space there, put a little more grease, gets one of these shift springs, 
gets a three millimeter washer and then there's a slot here that gets a c-clip this is the hardest c-clip in the whole stupid truck to get you have to kind of hold the washer down and get the clip in place Then we do the other side, grease up the shaft a little. The first one faces out, and this bushing goes on, nylon bushing. A little more grease, and then this one faces in. Now, the king hauler shift pawls are different. You can see that this shift pawl is cast in one piece and the king hauler one has got a brass bushing that's plugged into it. This one has got a cast little lip in here and this one is stamped out of steel. So it's an earlier design. I honestly don't know why Tamiya still makes that old style transmission. It works just fine. I would think from ease of building they would just settle on one design and the Euro trucks use the same shift shaft as the Grand Hauler they only have one minor difference in the case is they have an alignment pin I'll talk about that in a little bit so now we've got to put a another clip on here okay now, I like to add a little grease on these, and they get a spring on each end. And the grease helps the, keep the spring from falling off. Okay, so our shift shaft is complete, our upper and lower shafts are complete, so now it's time to drop them in. We take our completed shaft, or completed end, put the shaft in it with a large gear in, then this shaft, you push these kind of together and the shaft will long into the right, will drop right on. Okay, and they have to line up with these shift pawls here. So those are all lined up. I'm going to hold it with two fingers like this. I'm going to slide this end through the bushing and this through the bearing just like that. I like to leave the transmission laying down, double check that these are in the pawls, and then slide this end on. Okay. Double check one more time that everything's in there right and put a screw in it. Now see that wasn't so hard. Now notice I didn't grease up any of the gears yet. I don't do it now until everything is completely finished. Makes it much easier to work on. Keeps my hands from being so slippery. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but however long it is is how long it takes me to build a transmission. Okay, tighten those up. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to put this last one in, put the case on, and then realized I forgot it. So you do have to remember after this is together 
to throw in this final spacer. Now, one final thing on the shift shaft is it needs a, a little clip on each end. Technically, I suppose it probably doesn't need that one, but it's probably a good habit to put it on. Okay, there's a spacer here and a very unusual looking ball. It's a special size, you don't want to lose this because you can't buy it separately. I've not ever found a good replacement for it. It threads in here, and that's your shift ball, and that threads right on and tightens down. Okay, there we go. On the back end, we drop a spacer over it, and then we have to mount this joint cup. Now, there's two different lengths, this is a little tricky, two different lengths of set screws. There's a short one and a long one. So we use the long one for the joint cup. And in a king hauler, they actually come in a separate bag. There's a flat spot on the shaft. We line that up. Tighten that. Okay, looking good. Now, time for the motor. On this transmission, uh, I'm going to use a 55 turn motor because this is going to go into a truck and I virtually always change the motor. The Tamiya kits come with a 27 turn motor that basically is very fast and runs the trucks I think too quickly. This gives you better low end speed and more power. Uh, you saw the transmission I built ahead of time has the stock kit motor in it. But it's really difficult to change it later and I'll show you why in a minute. There's a spacer that goes on here little bit of Loctite and they use a six millimeter screw. We're gonna go right there. And on this side, there's a slot so you can adjust the motor. We're going to use a 6mm screw with a 3mm flat washer on it. Now the pinion gear here uses the short grub screw, also a little bit of thread lock, and you do not want to use a long one here because if you do it will hit the main gear. The motor has a flat spot on it, we're going to slide this on, 
I tighten this a little bit just so it's in the right spot and then you, you can actually slide the gear forward and back you want to slide it back far enough so that the gear that this grub screw is behind the gear okay and now you can drop the motor down you do not push it all the way down hard well actually I push it all the way down hard and then I pull it up just a tiny bit and tighten it down now you can also take a piece of typing paper and put in between there smash it down hard tighten the screws and then take the paper out so there we go there's our transmission all built important 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 test 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 so now I take a D battery and hook it up. Okay? If a D battery doesn't run your transmission, you didn't build it right. Okay? I can shift it. You can see how in low gear how that turns. I'll take this one with the 27 turn motor here. See how much faster it is even in low gear so with a 55 turn motor we get a much nicer lower speed uh, now it's time to uh, grease up the gears I do that by just turning the pinion gear with my finger grease these up doesn't take a ton got to grease the slots for the shift pawls And finally grease this one. A little messy. That's why I wait till the end. And that's all greased up. Okay, now the transmission case just fits around like this. Now you can see what I mean about changing the motor later. You can't you can't get to the screws unless you take the case off. And when this is mounted in the truck you can't get the case off unless you take it out of the truck so to change the motor later is a ton of work so decide on what motor you're going to use before you build your truck stock motor is fine but if you want to upgrade do it first same thing as the ball bearings the case is held on just with uh, these eight millimeter length screws and They use a captured nut. Well. Oh. That nut had a, a little set screw hidden inside of it. All right, so there's our finished transmission. I'm not going to put all those screws in here to start with today, but I always like to test them one more time. Works great, works smooth. Okay, now let's talk about the King Hauler shift shaft because, as I mentioned, the King Hauler has a different shift shaft. It still has two slots, it still has a long end. We'll grab a couple of uh, clips and we'll put it together and show you the difference. I've had a how to build the transmission video up for a long time, but I didn't really talk about the differences in the shift shafts. And I wanted to replace that video with this one because I do want to show that. It's minor, but the grand shaft has more parts and since the grand hauler is the most popular kit I wanted to show that okay long over to the end just the same This fits on the same. 
This fits on the same. It just looks different. Same spacer. And this fits on the same. Now the difference is that there's there's no slot here, there's no washer, and there's only one spring. It's a long spring. I actually don't even have that here with me. But you put the long spring on and then it fits in the housing exactly the same. Everything on the end fits in the same, but the main difference is there's only one spring and no washer. Uh, grand hauler, there's two springs with a washer in between. So that's the difference in that transmission. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish putting these together and then we'll uh, wrap up. And I will stop the video now. All right. So here's my uh, finished transmissions. We've got a 27 turn motor and a 55 turn motor. And just for the, all the super geeks out there, let's just see what the amperage difference is. I've got this at 3 volts. It looks like we're running 0 0.73, 0 0.72, 0 0.73 amps. And on this one, we're running 1.13. So quite a bit of difference. Uh, a lot less amperage draw with the 55 turn motor, which means we're going to have our truck that runs longer. So uh, there you go. A couple transmissions. Yeah, that's uh, hopefully helpful. It's not that hard to assemble them. One step at a time. You can do it. It uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, look guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. I know that my transmission build video that I had before has been just viewed hundreds of hundred thousand times, but um, I wanted to kind of update it with a, with a little bit of new information, so this video is going to replace that. I really appreciate you watching. Um, please subscribe to see updates and to me a truck builds and other stuff. Please visit my website, hobbyconcepts.net. And, uh, and check out the stuff I've got for sale there and uh, check my additional videos. So hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.